and Bay Area native. We're so proud. The Escobedo family's musical roots extend as far and wide. This beloved band will forever move the crowds. Let's give a warm San Jose welcome for the Pete Escobedo Orchestra! <laughs> Hi, my name is Savannah Solis uh, with Creative San Jose, and I'm here with the legendary Pete Escovito. Thank you, nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, percussionist, singer, songwriter, etc. Um, Thank you so much for spending your time here with me on this fine day. You're about to go to Music in the Park. No problem. So, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Thank you. And a happy belated birthday. Yes, thank well. you. I just made 76. Yes. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first question. Um, what influence has Tito Puente had on your music? Oh, my goodness. So much. I mean, I was so very fortunate to meet him when I was 18 years old. That's what I met him. That's how long we have been friends. But Tito was, um, he was the guy for me. I mean, he was the one who actually set the stage with the timbales that, that they would be out front and lead an orchestra. Nobody did it before. He was the first one. And so he influenced a lot of musicians uh, to, to do that kind of work uh, with orchestras. So. For me, I mean, I loved his playing. And, and of course, when I met him, he was still very young. And he was just so fantastic. I mean, fast and he was just incredible. Everybody that would watch him and see him, they knew that he was the guy. That's why they called him the king, El Rey. He was the best. And so uh, I, because I just adored him, loved him, respected him so much, I, in a sense, try to base my playing like Tito, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't even come close. Okay. <laughs> so, um, tell me about the new release of the E! Family CD. Oh boy, that's so exciting. <laughs> uh, we are really, really happy that this finally came about because, you know, Sheila, she has her own career, I have my own career, my son Peter Michael has his career in television. My son Juan has his little band that he plays with. So we're all doing actually separate things. But we've been talking about this for a number of years. Why don't we get together and do our own CD as a family? Yeah. So we kicked it around and kicked it around. So it's a great idea. We started writing the music. We produced it ourselves. We wrote all the songs. We called all the musicians. We did everything. And it was a great, great time for us because it gave us the chance to play as a family. So now that the CD is out, uh, it's going great. So I see that you've played for music in the park for quite some time. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, somebody told me, and I believe it was either last year that I got a, an award, a plaque. Oh. And it said that I think I played here 15, 16 years, wow. something like that. It's been a long time. Yeah. But uh, this is always fun for me. I mean, the fans come out. Uh, it's great to see people that I've known for years. Uh, I've always loved San Jose. I had a club here once, but that didn't work out, but that doesn't <laughs> matter. Uh, but just, just coming here to San Jose has always been fun for me. Uh, the people always embrace me. Uh, with my music and I have very great fans here that I've had for years and they support what I do and they make me feel at home and to me it feels like I'm going there to play but it feels like they're all in my front room <laughs> and we're just having a good time. Yeah. So it, that's fun. So it seems you have a lot of involvement in the San Jose community. Um, can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, I always try to give back whatever I can and if that means going to any facility where the kids are. Of course, there are kids that have been in foster care. Uh, they're, they're in facilities that their mother and father don't have them anymore. They've been in trouble, uh, those kind of things. So we go there, I go there with sometimes the members of the family, sometimes just myself, and 
I take all the instruments, I've played them for the kids, and I invite them up to come and play with me. And oh, wow. we have a great time. I talk to them about history, the music, you know, about staying in school, going on the right path, you know. So it, it's, it's really good, because I think mainly what happens now is so many things have been taken out of our school districts yes. that uh, they have taken out the music and the sports and things that kids need. And so uh, I always involve myself with whatever I can do within any community, and especially San Jose, because I know there are a lot of Latin young kids that uh, have gone in the wrong direction now, but we hope that will make them go in the right direction. All right. Yeah. So not only are you passionate about your music, but it looks like you're also very passionate about paintings and drawings as well. Yeah. And it looks like we got a little Picasso with the Frida Kahlo <laughs> kind of thing there going go. on here. There you go. So you want to tell me a little bit about how that came about? Sure. Actually, I was was painting and drawing in school, in high school, the same time I was playing music. The funny thing about that is that I had a great art teacher. Uh, her name was Miss Snee. She's a, uh, just a great woman and she took me under her wing. She let me go in the back of the room and use the oil paints and she kind of just watched over me and so she saw that I had something so she managed to get me a scholarship and, at an art college and also an uh, apprentice job working for an advertising company. Oh, wow. So I was all set. All I had to do was finish school and go on to this life of art. Wow. But all at the same time, I was learning how to play music. So what happened was, I thought in my mind, I said, well, should I be a starving artist or a starving musician? I chose to be a starving musician. <laughs> and uh, I never looked back on that. I mean, I, I, I love playing music, but I love to paint. Each thing, takes 100%. I have to give 100% to my music, I have to give 100% to my art. So I approach both things in that sense. And what happens is that the outcome of it is totally rewarding for me because now, I think of since I started painting and up to now, uh, I've in a sense matured and I, I know that my artwork is starting to gain recognition. Yeah. People are aware now of my artwork. I've had some great art gallery showings, sold a, a number of paintings over the years, and people that own my art are in the entertainment business, television, movies, uh, musicians, people that have bought my paintings. And, and uh, it's just wonderful for me that they have my paintings in their home. So I'm very, very happy about that. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview with You're us. You're welcome, man. So nice to meet you. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. Marty Weiner, playing trombone with Pete Escovito. I've known Pete and his band for probably 27 years at least now. And uh, it's the musical community is very close-knit, so if you know other guys in the band, they kind of get you involved. And uh, of course, I knew all the horn players, so they said, hey, come on in and play. <laughs> Story, but the short story is I, I moved out to the Bay Area to be close to this scene and to be around guys like Pete and, and Ray Oviedo and uh, so uh, you know just working my way up the ladder and uh, was fortunate enough to get a chance to play with them so it's a dream come true for me to be able to play in this band. So it's like how's a funky white boy in the <laughs> Man I got into this kind of music in college you know I was a, a, a rock and roll drummer Yeah. and uh, Something about it really speaks to me. I love it. I'm a student of the music and I'm still working on it, but uh, I'm in the right place, that's for sure. Well, tell everybody where you're from. Topeka, Kansas. Hi, I'm Peter Escovito. I'm here in San Jose doing music in the park. And you are watching Silicon Valley Channel 30, the best. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.